My name is Wes Cook, and this is my personal testimony. I want to give a little background so you'll better understand me as the person or how I... I grew up without a dad. My dad left when I was two, and so it was my mother, my little brother and I lived with my grandparents until my mother remarried, and uh, it was within a few months after remarrying that uh, her husband had a massive heart attack and no longer could work and so we were very poor and struggling and I went from a small country school to a junior high in the city. I didn't know anybody and my mom was n not good at parenting. My mom was so young, my mom was 17 when she had me and, and she didn't know how to be a parent and I got in this big school and didn't know nobody and fell in with the wrong crowd and, and it was the late 60s, early 70s and I started doing drugs and believe it or not, I'm eighth grade I was having sex and, and just whatever came my way and, and it just progressed and in and out of trouble and I uh, went to high school and I started experimenting with uh, intravenous drugs. And in that process, with no parenting, no boundaries, just come and go as I pleased, uh, the consequences of that lifestyle, I ended up with hepatitis C. And uh, somewhere around 1974, I'd say. And it wasn't discovered until 1995. Uh, my youngest son and I were gonna go to a scout camp and I was at that age where I had to have a physical and then the blood test came up and all of a sudden I was faced with hepatitis C in 95 was very rare and unknown and it was like you know all you go to the doctor and one day he tells you you better get your affairs in order because you're gonna die and so I had to prepare to go through a liver transplant and uh, I asked God I said God can you help me through this I, I knew not, I didn't know God, I didn't go to church, I'd never been to church, I, I really had no experience with God, but I said, you know, I said, God, can you help me through this? I can't guarantee you that I'm going to change my lifestyle, but I need your help, Lord. So God, God saved my life, he got me a liver transplant, and uh, it, God loved me so much, he just, you know, he was there and he waited, he just, I, I didn't change, I went, you know, I had a transplant, went back to work. I worked construction as a construction superintendent. You know, I just, life kept rolling on. And then in uh, 2008, it was 10 years later, and, and uh, at my annual checkup, the doctor says, you know, your liver's got about three to five years left on it. And uh, because the hepatitis is destroying the new liver. So they had some new chemotherapy treatments out and so we decided that we'd try this treatment and the chemo was for hepatitis you give yourself a shot every week for 54 weeks if you could make it that long you sick for three or throw up for three or four days and then you start feeling halfway human and then you give yourself another shot well life was just it was the most the worst thing i'd ever did in my life was that chemo treatment it was just it it was so mentally and physically stressing and in february of 2009 it was like the second week of february i was asleep on the couch one day and during this nap i started having this dream about the light at the end of the tunnel and, and i guess i thought i was going to heaven and and this light was coming around this door and as the door opened all I saw were flames and I realized that it was hell and God said to me this is where you're headed and I fell off the couch onto the floor sweating on my knees and I started begging God I said God forgive me I have sinned God please forgive me I will change from that day forward I realized that my life had to change you know so my wife and I we talked about finding a church and one of the ladies at this church was our dog groomer and she gives a card and said why don't you come to the mustard seed for Easter Sunday and we went to church and uh, 
really liked the mustard seed and and so we took the partnership class and, and then we were doing impact weekend and, and during impact weekend we had broke up into our prayer groups and uh, we were praying and all of a sudden Eli had this vision he says I see a fireball coming at you and and he had his hand he just held his hand and he pushed that fireball into my chest and and all of a sudden my whole body just started heating up and it was like the Holy Spirit was cleansing my heart and my soul and and then it just as quickly as it came it left out my back and it was so amazing I, I couldn't understand exactly what had even happened but after that experience God became so real to me he started communicating with me I realized that you could talk to God and if you understood how to listen he would communicate back with you. The rebel in me wasn't a rebel anymore. It was in his place was a compassionate person and the clock's still ticking on my liver disease. I'm, you know, I'm faced with certain death and my testimony to other people of how I can wake up every day and and today is is just such a great day and you know i can i get up and do things and and yet you know i'm just i'm not afraid of death anymore i'm in the final stage of my liver disease now and and there's i have a lot of problems and i take pills every day for for pain and uh you know i don't fear evil anymore i don't feel or fear anything because i know that god is with me every day he's just he's right there when i need him uh you know i look at the little things anymore all the little miracles in life that god is god shows his love to me every day and uh if you want to hear more wonderful stories about our wonderful god you know Buy me a cup of coffee sometime and sit down and I'll fill your heart with the gift of love that God has filled my heart with. Thank you.